All right, guys, so today, um, here's the equipment that we're gonna use. I had a bunch of stuff on my desk and I'm at home, but I had a customer, or I'm at home. Um, so we have a customer who's needing a Porsche key programmed. I don't have my notes. I believe it's a 15, I think he had a Panamera. Um, but anyway, it was all keys lost and I believe he's in Missouri. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't exactly remember, but here are the tools that we're going to be using today. So I'm going to take you through the process of programming a Porsche smart key. Um, and this goes for years 2010 through 2018. Okay, so let's go through the steps and the tools that I'm going to be using. Uh, just a screwdriver set there. Uh, this is the programmer that we're going to be using. Uh, these are some uh, keys that I have in here. And this is the customer's uh, module. Okay, so we do provide this service. Uh, so here is the customer's BCM. You will need the BCM to program these keys, guys. This is what it looks like. Here is the part number here, 7PP907064EG. Uh, the customer also purchased a, a used key on eBay that he wanted me to uh, reflash and program it into this module. Uh, this is the four button, so this is probably for the uh, the Cayman. Uh, those usually have the four buttons. Uh, only three will be used for this one, though. Alrighty. Here's a bag of some European keys. Uh, we actually have a Porsche key here. The fancy sides on this one. Uh, another Porsche. Uh, this is the one that he should have gotten right here, uh, but that's fine. Uh, we can also reflash uh, use keys. Uh, the dealer will tell you guys that it cannot be done. It can be done if you just check out my other video on reflashing or renewing Porsche keys. Uh, it absolutely can be done, and I'll show you here in a second that a use key can be used on another Porsche vehicle. Okay, so I'm gonna check out my keys just in case we're having problems with his key. Let's get that out of the way here. Also, what I'm gonna be using is a VVDI key tool. Uh, the key DIY also has a version key tool, magnifying glass, and um, cord to use it used for my key tool. I'll be using the ABDI today to be programming this key. And I'm not even going to cut this video. I want you guys to see the exact process and exactly how long it's going to take. Uh, generally, it's about a 15 minute job or a little bit less. Uh, so bear with me as I show you guys that are interested in how to program a poor smart key. programming software that we're going to be using the ACDP and this is what it looks like guys um, I have stuff for uh, BMW uh, FEM module cast uh, Porsche is going to be right here so this is what we're going to be using for uh, the Porsche programming uh, this is the actual equipment itself I need the 
this. So I'll slide this out of the way. Okay, so this is everything that I'm going to be using right here, guys. All right, let me go ahead and put this down and get this set up real quick. Gonna go ahead and connect the programming device, power it up, as you can see here. I'm gonna make my connections. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to the actual program. I'm going to see if I can get this so that you guys can see it. So it is the ACD P. Okay, it's loading up. It's going to try to recognize the device over here, and you'll know when it connects when you hear DD. change my Bluetooth settings here. Let's see. Let's change my settings. One second, guys. I should have had this set up. Um, but I want to do it real time so that you guys get an idea as to what it will cost. All right, so you just heard it beep. It went deep. -de now I'll go back to the... Okay. And we're connected here. I'm going to go into... Um, Porsche. Well, before I do that, Go ahead and turn on the key device here. Because um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to reflash this key first. Uh, as is, it's a used key. It won't be able to be programmed into the customer's module. So I need to wipe clean this key first. Um, so I'll do that now. And here's where I pull out my magnifying glass and figure out exactly which part number this key is and how many megahertz um, because it does make a difference if you get a key that's uh, let's just say 433 or 34 megahertz and the system itself is 315 megahertz it's not going to work. So let me take a look here. 
Uh, this one is 350 megahertz. And then I'm gonna come over to the actual BCM module from the customer's vehicle. Let's see if I can catch this here. Let's see if I can get it in the light or Right, so right there in the corner, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but it says 315 megahertz system. Um, so it is the same. So we'll be able to use this key after we reflash it and bring it back to a virgin state. Okay, let's go ahead and set this down and then go ahead and take care of this now. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of the programming software and go into the uh, KD software. I'm going to agree to the terms. Check my Bluetooth setting. I'm going to go ahead and pair it to the device. connected to the device I'll come out and go to uh, chip functions scroll down to remote renew I want to renew the remote I'm not gonna update right now uh, let's go to Porsche now, then it gives us several different options based on the part number um, this customer has a 315 megahertz system. Um, I'll go with this BM because the BQ is for keyless go. I don't believe he has keyless go. He advised he has to stick the key into the ignition or the slot in order to turn on the vehicle. So I'll go with the BM here. Now what it'll do is it'll kind of show me a diagram as to how I need to connect um, my connection cables in order to reflash this system. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that now. guarantee you if I wasn't rushing this um, trying to make the video I'd be able to get this on All right. All right, so what will happen is after I connect my green then I'm going to hit the unlock right here and I'll try to catch that for you guys set up to where you can see it. So I'm going to 
gonna click on lock and then it'll wait for me to uh, connect my green connection. Exit A, click to download. I'm not sure why that's happening. All right. All right, I guess I needed the latest version. All right, so you'll see as I connect here. All right, see where it says, please wait. Okay, so now generating progress. I'm at 27% now. Eighty percent. All right. Now, as you can see. Is complete successfully. So now I'm going to unhook the key and then I'll put this down and then what we'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll test it. So how I'm going to test it is I will get my VVDI tool. See where it says transponder clone. I'll click, click OK. Automatic detection. Just going to put my key in here. Now it's reading the data. All right. Now let's take a look. I'm trying to get close here. So it's telling me it's a Porsche key. We see the status. It says not learned. It gives me the part number, the frequency. Um, and this key now is blank. It's not learned. It does not have a VIN number associated with it or anything. So now we're all set with that. Let's put that to the side here. So now this key is in an unlearned brand new state. Let's go ahead and put, put in our battery and our cover here. You should have gotten a blank key. Test the frequency of this key, make sure the buttons are working. Um, okay, so I see it flashing, so the buttons are working. Let's just make sure it's 315. And as you can see, it's 315 megahertz. Sorry guys for the noise. I have the lawn guys out there now. All right, let's get back to the programming. Let's click back, let's come out of here. Now that I know my key is refreshed and in a brand new state, I'll go ahead and I'll start the process of programming. So that's gonna be the mini AC. Hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna scroll down to Porsche. see this all right so I'm gonna go to new Porsche all keys lost or add a key okay um, it's the immobilizer system I'm not programming on the car so it has to go to ICO it's loading the resources Let's see 
if I can zoom in here. Uh, now what this is asking is what sort of chip is on the actual board of the BCM module. How we can tell this by opening it up. So let's do that now. access to the VCM module. Here's what it looks like guys, the control board. Uh, this is what I was referring to, this chip right here. I'm going to have to take a magnifying glass and figure out exactly which chip is on this board. And it's showing that it's a 2M25J. Also, what's going to be important is this oscillator here. Uh, sometimes they're ceramic or they're metal. It's going to make a difference in the settings when we get to the programming stage. Um, but I know that my chip is a 20 or sorry, 2M25J. So I'm going to come back over here. And we see that the 2M25J is the last option. So that's the mask that I'm going to choose. Now it's asking me which mode would I like to do it in. I'm just going to go to the add key, the automatic mode, if I don't want to do this manually. Now it's loading the resources. So I think the program um, failed. So let me go back in. Probably timed out on me. Let's just take a second to get back in. Porsche, new Porsche, IMO. to M25J, add key, loading. Alrighty, so now it's telling us to prepare the board. Uh, so now I'll come over to the programming equipment here. I'm going to get my board out. these let me go ahead and put you down okay, I'll go ahead and get this set up everything is lined up and once everything is lined up and touching all of the connection points I go ahead and get this mounted down once that's mounted down I go ahead and make my connection to my programmer 
guess that's going to be back over here. All right, let's click OK. Now it's telling me to make sure that everything is connected properly. It is. Let's click OK. Okay, it's checking all of the pins over here to make sure everything is lined up. You see this here. And as long as I lined up everything correctly, then I should get um, greens for everything, which I did. I have good contacts at all of my connection points. So I continue. It's configuring now the system. All right, so it says that this crypt is, in, is encrypted. Do I want to continue? Yes. Now it's configuring this adapter and you see here, now it's decrypting the chip. It's telling me that based on what I selected, I selected chip 2M25J and the actual chip is 2M25J, uh, which is correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And now it's reading the flash drive or P drive of the BCM module here. Okay. Okay, currently at 20%. Again, I'm not going to speed up this video or clip this video. I want you guys to see all of this in real time. Currently now at 38%, it's still reading the chip. Here's the setup, there's a programmer there. Here is the key here. And I'm actually gonna need this adapter. This is what programs or reads the key that I'll be connecting here uh, momentarily. Let's check our progress. We're at 60, almost 65%. Uh, we're still reading the BCM here. It's still reading the P flash. Well, hopefully I'm not too shaky, guys. I'm not as steady as I was when I was a young guy. Alrighty, so now it's asking me to save the P flash data, which I will. Currently uploading the file. Uh, now it's telling me where it's saving the data to on the phone. Now we're currently reading the EEPROM and the D flash data. Okay, this actually shouldn't take too long. All right, so it read the EEPROM and all of the key data and it's asking me to save the file. I hit OK. It's telling me where it's saving the file to. Yes, I need to save the D flash as well. Yes, here's where I'm saving that file to. Now it's giving me my BCM data. So it's telling me here's the VIN number right here. The security password. Uh, currently, there are two keys in this system. Uh, the Fs indicate that these are blank spots. So slots three through eight is free. There are two keys currently in this system. I want to hit continue. Now what it's doing is it's telling me to connect the key adapter with a blank key, which I'll do right now. Okay, so I'm going to unplug this. Move that out of the way. I'm going to plug up my key adapter now uh, with my blank key. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Okay, there I go. I'm going to put my blank key now into the adapter and let's come back to our program. Hit OK. So now it's reading the key information. All right. It's telling me that the key number is A8809C34. That's my blank key. OK. It's asking me now at this point that, hey, you have two keys in the system that are used pick any free slot. So we'll just pick slot number three, that's fine, and hit continue. Now it's reading the key information, please wait. It's programming the key now. All 
All right, please store the dflash file after adding the new key, which we'll do because you have to rewrite it back to the BCM. Okay, here are the new files that it's creating in the background. Now it's telling me to connect the programmer back to the BCM. So I'll disconnect my key and key adapter. Okay, so now I have my BCM connected back to the programmer. Let's come back over to our app here. Click OK. It's checking, it's rechecking the pins as you can see by the red light to make sure that all of my pins are connected properly. Um, I didn't touch it, so I should get a good pin read. Okay, yes, as expected, all of my pins are fine. I'm going to click continue. Now it's telling me it's going to write this information, including my new key, which is key number three, back to the BCM, which is yes, okay. Now it's configuring the adapter, please wait. Now it's decrypting the chip and it's writing the new key data and EEPROM information flash drive to the customer's BCM module. This process shouldn't take that long. Okay, now it's verifying the information off of the chip from the BCM. All right, so it says that adding a key is complete. Please install the BCM back into the vehicle and confirm that the new key can be used. I click OK. These are generating backup files just in case, and the process is now complete. Okay. Now, this key is programmed or into this BCM. Okay, so that is the process, guys. And usually what I'd like to do is I can test the key prior to shipping it back out to the customer to make sure that it is a valid and working key. And I'll show you that process now. So let me go ahead and get this disconnected. I'll save time on putting the screws back, um, but let me show you a, a nice little tester here. So this is actually my BCM tester for Porsche, and I'll show you how this works. Let's go ahead and get this connected to the BCM. So it's now plugged into the communication slots. This is what it looks like. I'll go ahead and power up the device um, by 12 volt. So let's go ahead and unplug this and then plug it in here. Okay, so now we've plugged up the device and let me show you how this works, guys. So I'll take my key. Okay, so I have my key, and here is the key that we just programmed, and this is how this tester works. So what this tester does is it simulates the computer, the start module, um, and this is what I use to test the key to make sure I have a working key before I send it back to the customer. Okay, um, It has an ignition tester as well. So this is how it works. Let's say my key, right? You see the red, so this is a working key. Okay, it does have a good battery. I'm going to put it next to the sensor here. And as you can see, my remote is not being picked up by this BCM. 
Okay. Now let's take a look to see what happens when I put the key that we just programmed. Okay. Watch this. All right. See that green light over here, which means it's passing and it's picking up the signal from this key. So this customer doors will unlock because I press the unlock button. Okay, so I know that will work on the vehicle once this VCM is reinstalled. Let's check the lock. That will also work. It pass and then the trunk. Okay. Uh, there are this isn't a four function key for this particular system, so I'm anticipating that this fourth button is not going to work. Okay, which it is not, just as expected. Okay. Um, but the trunk, the lock. And the unlock will function on this vehicle. Okay. Alrighty, good that the lock, unlock, and trunk will work, but will it actually start the car? Well, let's test. Here is my unprogrammed key. I'm going to put it into the simulated ignition coil, and I am going to test. Okay. So right now it's running a series of tests and it's going to tell me, okay, it's simulating ignition and it's going to tell me if this key fails or passes. All right, as you guys can see, red fail, this key will not start the vehicle. Let's try the key that we just programmed. Let's go ahead and run a test again. And now it's reading, it's simulating engine control module, ignition, and let's see what happens with this key. All right, this one is green, it does pass, which means this vehicle or this key will start this vehicle and the remote will work as well, all buttons. All right, guys, that's it. I'll go ahead and get this packed back up and then I'll send it to my customer uh, via FedEx overnight so that he can reinstall into the vehicle. And now he has a working key. If you have any questions or need this service, reach out to me directly.